Hello everyone, Hippo here. Uh, today I'm going to be walking you through the atmospherics install for EFP as it's kind of long overdue at this point. Um, obviously you have to have EFP installed and ready. I'm going to actually go through with it uh, with you guys as well um, and install everything fresh on as if it's like the first time installing atmospherics. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, you're going to need to get screen space shaders, the latest update, which is going to be 14.2 as of this video. You're gonna need dynamic bit time-based tone map. You need the modded DXEs for Stalker, and you're gonna need a reshade if you do want to use the optional reshade option. And you're gonna need the atmospherics as well as additional mod um, files as well for atmospherics. So I guess to start, you're gonna need to download this screen space shaders. You can find this on mod DB 14.2 at the moment. Dynamic time-based tone map update seven at the moment. Download that. And from uh, the modded EXEs for Stalker Anomaly, you need to download them. And to download them, if you're not familiar with GitHub, you're just gonna press code, download zip, and that'll start downloading. For reshade, you click download, it'll take you to the bottom, and you'll just download reshade 5.6 at the, at, the, at the time of this video. And then you can just drag like this and just download both. You're gonna download the shares atmospherics 1.37.5 at the time of this video, and then additional mods and instructions. Um, and then optionally, you can also download Aiden's Grass Tweaks. Uh, it's just some really good grass. It gives you good performance because the draw distance is pretty high. And you can just lessen, uh, decrease the draw distance to make up for it and then uh, get more FPS as a result. It's pretty good. Uh, there's an autumn and a summer version for those that want a more dead look and then for those that want a more vibrant look. Um, with that out of the way, uh, you can open your anomaly directory for EFP. It, it will be essentially like this. Um, so I guess some things we can do now are we can install the modded EXEs. I have everything ready on my desktop. So for your modded EXEs, you can just open that up like that. There's gonna be another zip folder in here. Open that up. You can just drag and drop, copy, paste. That does it all. That's all you need to do. Um, so that is out of the way. I can move that to the side. Um, next, um, so if you do have a reshade installed already, delete the reshade shaders folder. But if you don't have a reshade installed, we'll, we're gonna walk through that as well. So let me go ahead, actually I forgot to download reshade 5.6. That'll finish up quickly. And it's all over there. So we can do the reshade part. If you don't want reshade, don't do this now. Reshade will cost FPS, it will give you some CPU and GPU overhead. If you're already strapped on FPS, don't do this. I have to repeat that because many people have issues with that. Um, so go ahead, pop that open, browse, you're gonna find your EFP directory. So right here, and then you go to bin, and I use DirectX 11, either one will work. So I just do this. Next, DirectX 11, 10, 11, 12. I'm gonna click uninstall because I already have reshade installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and update that. Once it's uninstalled, if you already had it installed, then you're gonna go through it again. If you don't, if you don't already have it installed, this is where you're gonna follow. You do this again. Next, DirectX 10, 11, 12. Next, next or skip, doesn't really matter. Uncheck all, it won't really matter because we're gonna delete that folder regardless. And it will finish. And then up here, when it's installed, there's gonna be a new reshade shaders folder. Delete this, you won't need this. Now that the EXEs and the reshade is basically installed, you can go to your app data and delete your shaders cache. Just so, so you won't have to be in here anymore. This is basically done. You don't have to be in here at the moment. You can open your mod organizer too. And by default, it's gonna be like something like this, which usually you know closed out. You need to go into the visual section. Everything that you need to do is in here. It should be, it should look like this. So what you need to have disabled are the upscale uh, pack skies, the uh, cube maps, the nicer reflections. You can have these on really, but I disable them. You need to disable screen space shares 11.6 or whatever version it is to make sure it's the latest because we're gonna need to install our own. Uh, optimize sun, sh sun ray sun shafts. You can disable that. You can keep it on. It's kind of optional. And then if you don't want to run 
the uh, what's it called like uh, the gold autumn retexture and you want to use Aiden's grass like I mentioned earlier you can disable this as well um, and that's pretty much it as far as we need to disable from here oh I guess also another thing big thing actually aggressor custom weather you need to disable that as well um, and that should cover it and then from now we can start installing some stuff so reshade's done exes are done uh, this is optional keep that to the side Let's install some, uh, let's install dynamic tape based tone map. Doo -doo -doo -doo, desktop, dynamic tone based extended, install that, click OK. And I can just drag this up here. Doesn't really matter because it's not gonna, it's not gonna really be um, overwritten by much. That just won't really matter. Um, but yeah, you just place it really anywhere. I'm just gonna place it down here at the bottom. And then now that the dynamic space tone maps is done, put it to the side. We can install screen space shaders, the new one. Uh, desktop screen space shaders should be uh, down here. Do that. You're gonna select all of these options that I have on the screen and fog. Now, other th another thing to keep in mind is that if you are running a snow-based texture pack like Project Inverno or Frozen Zone, you do want to tick this option, SS Water Ice version. Otherwise, you don't need this. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much all that you're gonna need. Press OK. It's up here. Put that there. I'm just gonna put it right next to where Screen Space Shaders was earlier. It won't really matter. I mean, you can kind of place this down here next to Dynamic Based Tone Map, up to you. And then after this, now that Screen Space Shaders is done, we can put that to the side. We, so you need to go into your additional mods and instructions resources and you need to find additional required mods for EFP and you can just drag and drop shaders pack outside of it. And that's all the mods you'll need from inside of here. There's just more instructions and resources like load order, what to disable, how to delete cache, reshape paths. So you know how to install, put in your reshape paths is up here. There's a lot of resources in here for you after this video if you need them. With that out of the way, you can install the shader packs right here. So shader packs right here, install that, and then click that and you can drag and drop. Um, I put this, you have to have this uh, in a lower priority compared to screen space shaders. Cause if you go to the side, it has to be lower. So screen space shaders 14.2 uh, is one one ninety eight. Shaders pack has to be below it. So 197. Um, so shaders pack is done. Additional mods is basically done. Put these to the side. Now we can do hippo shaders and atmospherics. So from this, you can you require sky textures. And if you want, if you want reshade, only if you want reshade, and the presets that come with it, which are kind of nice, but they're optional. You you select zero three, and then you have to choose only one, atmospherics or snowy atmospherics. So they kind of, it kind of says it all. Snowy atmospherics only if you're running Project Inverno or, Pro, or Frozen Zone or any other snow-based texture pack because it disables weather. So essentially what it is is that, is that it disables rain from the weather so that way the snowfall script works and doesn't bug out with weather. But I'm not running snowy atmospherics at the moment so I can just click this, which is regular so that has rain and such. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do is use extra instructions. Click OK. It'll install. You place this at the bottom, and just like just like so. That's done. Now you can also optionally, if you do want to do that grass, Aiden's grass tweaks. You install that. It's a nice foam mod installer. I would typically only do the dying autumn grass, and you can just select what options you want. So if you're doing autumn, you can do these two. If you can honestly also mix and match like this, if it's up to you. I'm just gonna go with this, autumn grass. I'm not gonna use any of the trees. It'll install, just give it a moment. And once that's done, we'll, we can go ahead for the next step. Uh, the grass can really go anywhere. Just make sure it's not being overwritten by like another texture pack. So just like that. Um, and with that out of the way, that's pretty much it. We already deleted shader cache, everything's installed. And we can go ahead and launch. So go ahead and launch, just give it a moment, push this to the side, 
and we'll start it up. We'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah, um, everything's kind of pretty easy from here on out. Um, people do get confused on load order and what to install and what to disable. So hopefully this video kind of answers that a little bit. And once we load in, we can go through the console commands, some video settings, and some MCM stuff as well. Um, yeah, and it would be kind of funny if as I'm filming this video, everything goes wrong. Because um, I'm definitely not publishing that. But we'll see how this goes. should be easy. Um, it's not as complicated as it may seem. Because uh, it is kind of daunting, I guess, when you come across a mod that requires four or five other mods for it to look the way it does. Um, but it is worth it as far as visuals are concerned, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so we wait and we wait and we wait. And we're only waiting right now for quite a bit. It's because um, we just installed the EXEs and everything else uh, as I'm going with it through with you guys. Um, but on the second load of the modded EXEs and everything else, it won't take this long. Yep, free shades running right now. Cool. Let me disable the audio. Cool. Um, first thing you do, open your console by pressing the tilde key right under the escape, CFG underscore load. If you're running reshade, you do hippo SR. If you're running, for instance, no reshade, you do hippo S. SR stands for shaders and reshade. S just stands for shaders, shader parameters, really. You run that. But I'm running reshade, so that's it. Uh, SR. Uh, you go mod configuration menu. Scroll down a little bit. You're going to have to find dynamic tone map. Press default. And it'll be more than one setting for you, probably. Uh, and then you click apply. Some other things to keep in mind is that if you're, this is the first time you're installing like updated uh, screen space shaders, you can play around with the depth of field so that way your weapon's not super blurry. Um, you can adjust these as you go. These are my settings if you want to pause the video so that way my weapon is not too blurry but as a slight blur. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as mod configuration menu. As far as settings go, uh, let's go to visual, advanced. I tip, I have a pretty good rig, so I typically run everything for mostly very high. Um, but some things to keep in mind is that anti filtering doesn't have that much of a FPS cost. I would crank this up 8x or 16x ideally, if you can. Um, some other things, um, grass rendering distance, if you're running Aiden's, you can set this down lower and you can still see pretty far. Density and grass size really up to you and what your rig can handle. Grass shadows, I don't enable just because we have screen space uh, shadows from screen space shaders mod. Um, actor shadow, I don't run because it can be kind of weird for screenshots and such. Um, sun rays mode, it's really optional what you want as far as volumetric screen space or both. Some people I've talked to prefer screen space with my mod. Some other people prefer volumetric slash both with my mod, up to you. Um, quality is also up to you and your rig. So SSA mode, it has to be SSDO, just because if you want the ambient occlusion from a uh, screen space shaders, this needs to be enabled. And then quality is up to you. And the rest is self-explanatory. If you're not using reshade, you can end the video here. You're pretty much good to go. If you are using reshade, you're gonna have to press the home menu. Everything's just installed, so you can click next, next, next. Right here, these are gonna be your shader paths once you can click settings on the top. You, all you're gonna do is you're gonna do a slash and you do two star signs or like shift eight really. And then that's that. You can click continue and you click finish and you click reload on this side. Some things to keep in mind is that um, with my reshade, do not use performance mode because some of the reshade effects at the moment of this video do not compile well with performance mode at all, and they will not take effect at all. Um, all. So now that you're here, you don't have the reshade at all. What you need to do is you need to click this top bar, click the two dots. So essentially what it is, is this is taking you to directory. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to EFP, you wanna go to your mod organizer too for EFP, and then go to mods in your EFP, and you gotta scroll down to where Hippo is. So it's right here for me. And if you installed the option reshade portion of Hippo, 
there's any bin folder. And then from here, you can select everything you want. So I'm going to select Hippo SR for demonstration. Everything's going to load up. These are the default effects. Anything above this are optional. And so is this one effect right here, sharp contrast. If you're running in this sharp contrast, make sure Glamour A is at the bottom of the loader always. Um, and that's it. We can load into a game at the moment. Uh, I guess we can go to Cordon for a demonstration. It's not that hard. Um, it can just be time consuming, especially if it's your first time doing this. One thing I forgot to mention, um, I'm recording this uh, after the fact, is that I forgot to show you how to set up your depth buffer for Soccer Anomaly. So you open your reshape menu by pressing the home key. You gotta click edit global preposter definitions. And you should have all these options if you've installed reshape 5.6. And the only thing you'll need to do is reshape depth input is reverse. It's set to one by default, set it to zero. And once you do that, it's everything's gonna reload. And that's your reshade depth set up correctly for Stalker. You can also verify that in game as well. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Sorry about that. So as far as this goes, this is how it'll look. Um, this is just foggy weather at the moment. Um, and then I also typically like to run TFAA, which is the best anti-aliasing for Stalker at the moment. These are the effects that you'll need. I also can run film grain because I do like that sometimes. And this is it. Everything else in the middle right here is optional and you can and you can use it. Um, but if you are running the optional effects that are between reveal bottom and reveal top, make sure these two are, are uh, turned on before you use these effects right here, like any ambi occlusion or anything like that. But I'm not gonna do that. Uh, let me change the weather to, I guess, showcase, not just, uh, so this is clear, this is how it looks. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, clear too, looks pretty nice as well. Um, cloudy one, cloudy two, foggy as we saw earlier, partly one, rain one, nice and tinted blue, rain two, rain three, storm, storm two, gotta get away before I get bugged and uh, yeah. So there's that. And as far as other reshape, reshape presets go, this is how they'll look. Uh, let's do film. Film will look like that, um, which also has a TFA if you wanna enable that. Film two will look like this, slightly darker, kind of atmospheric, I suppose. Then you also have some of Frozak's presets, these two, Badland and Poison Republic. So let's do Badland first, this is the one that's like slightly blue and such. And I typically like to run this with a little bit of sharpening and TFAA as well. So it looks like that. And uh, if you're running any of Frozak's presets, the really atmospheric ones, especially Badlands per se, I wouldn't run um, any type of clear weather. I would just set clear weather to none, so sunny. And everything else can stay as is because it doesn't make sense to run like a moody atmospheric reshape preset with clear weather because this is how it would look clear and then this is how it would look with cloudy it's better um and then also as well you can run poison republic which is another reshape preset which i typically like to run like this that's how this looks but most of the time i'm running sr because i like to keep things kind of natural in a sense um and yeah that's pretty much how hippos reshade atmospherics looks. Um, ooh. <laughs> Let's fly away. But yeah, this is how it looks. Uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, you can just drop them in the comments. And uh, you guys have a good day. See you.